What's up guys, Eric here, it's Monday, so it's time for the Multiverse Mega Video where we talk about all of our favorite DC TV shows on the CW and other places. This week we're going to spend some time on Black Lightning discussing what we know about the show as well as some news and costume updates, some Supergirl stuff and some Flash and Legends stuff, so careful for spoilers if you don't want to know anything about details of these shows, uh, but let's jump right into it. So let's start off with the premiere date for the series Black Lightning. It's going to be launching into action on Tuesday, January 16th in the 9 p.m. time slot originally held by Legends of Tomorrow. Now, just a heads up, Legends will not be back in that time slot this season. They'll be moving to Mondays for the remainder of Season 3, and Black Lightning will be taking the place of Legends right after The Flash every single week for its entire run. Okay, with all that being said, let's talk in more detail about Black Lightning's costume. Now, I did do a video about my initial thoughts on the costume when it first got revealed, I believe, over the summer. Um, but now we've had more time with it. We've had a chance to really see it in motion. We've seen it in trailers, promo materials, posters. We've seen artwork with it. So we've seen quite a bit of it. So I think it's time to revisit this costume a little bit. Now I want to start off saying I'm not a big fan of the goggles. Um, the thing is they don't really hide his identity. And I'm not sure, maybe I missed it. I'm not sure if the general public is aware that Pierce is Black Lightning. Um, I might have to go back and check because I, I don't think that's been established. So if he is trying to hide his identity, this bugs me just like the Supergirl thing bugs me where it doesn't really cover her face or you know her glasses should not hide her identity. So same thing here with uh, with Jefferson Pierce because I believe that this is like, if I, if I knew him in real life and I saw him on the streets, this would be like wearing a pair of sunglasses. So I'm not a big fan of them in terms of being able to hide his identity. Now the rest of the costume... I love the look of it. The more I've seen it in action, the more I've seen promo materials for it, the more I absolutely love it. Uh, the blue just pops right off of this black with the uh, yellow and gold accents on the lightning design on the front of the suit. I love the uh, tactical feeling of it. Like it feels very street ready. You know, it feels like this is something you see a lot of these costumes, especially in the older designs from the Arrowverse and the uh, CW shows that don't feel like they're very practical. This one feels very practical to me. Um, I also love the uh, the under like the undershirt he has on the undersuit he has on. It looks like it's very similar to Ray's Adam undersuit, but it's got like it looks like circuitry in it. Maybe you know I don't know if that's a design element or if there is some sort of. Um, actual application for that design. Maybe it helps boost his powers or helps him control his powers. Um, either way, I'm really digging the suit. Um, can't wait to see it in action. It's probably one of my favorite uh, Arrowverse shoot. Well, I keep saying Arrowverse. We'll talk about that here in a second. One of my favorite DC TV show costumes in terms of looking like it could actually be a real thing. Uh, but let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about this suit. And we also got another costume reveal this past week. Uh, Pierce's daughter, Anissa, AKA Thunder. We get to see her costume finally. And I have to say uh, the look here again, the goggles, my gosh, I'm just not a fan of these. I mean, they're, they're, they're very stylish, right? I mean, I think they look stylish, but these, I mean, a big portion of her vision is covered with the design of these goggles. You got these big, huge openings on the side, but then the center of them is almost like they're blocking like, I don't know. It's it's really weird. I'm not a fan of the goggles. Again, does not hide her identity, in my opinion. And I don't I do not think that her identity is known to the public. Like, even if Black Lightning's secret identity is, I, I don't know if hers would be. Because what would be the point of wearing the mask if people knew who they were? So that's kind of weird. Okay, so let's talk about the suit here. Um, I like the collar. I think it's a cool, cool different like the collar is very different from anything we've seen so far um on the DC TV shows. I don't like the chest plate. Uh, let me be more specific here. I don't mind the more, uh, the, the design here on the top of the breastplate, uh, the little squares that go into sort of a peacock pattern. I like that. But then the bodice portion where it goes into the bust area, it looks like it's elongated. Like, not like the elongated man, but maybe like the elongated man. Like from the bottom of her chin to the center of her chest, it looks abnormally spaced out i guess is the best way i could say it um and i'm not a huge fan of that but i do like the pattern of the peacock pattern on the chest uh area and uh, the shoulder pads are okay love the arms the gauntlets are also very similar to her father's so i'm 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 digging that 
the pattern on the legs, the bottom half of the suit, I really like. Uh, but let me talk about what I what I don't like. The part that bothers me the most about the whole suit. Um, that is this sort of embellishment uh, that she has going down the sides and into the center over her ab area. And then on the belt as well. It's just really tacky to me. I think the suit would look better if those were gone, if they weren't there at all. Um, I'm not really certain if they serve a purpose. If they have a purpose on the show in regards to how she's going to use her powers, how they're going to display her powers on screen, then I'm willing to sort of accept it. But if it's just there for design purposes, um, for fashion purposes, I think it looks like, like, like in the fashion world, they would say this looks like it was just tacked on, like last minute. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about them. I don't, we don't get to see the back of the suit, so I'm not sure if this goes all the way around or if it's just here in the front, but not a fan of that at all. But overall, I think it's a decent costume. Not as exciting to me as Black Lightning's costume. I think his costume is still the better of the two. I mean, he's the lead character on the show, so I think that his should look better. But it's kind of weird because you think back to Arrow, I kind of, uh, liked the Arsenal costume and still to this day like the Arsenal costume better than the Green Arrow costume. Uh, not the one that Thea wears, but the one that Roy actually wore. I, I preferred that one a lot more, you know. So anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this costume design and uh, what you think of the actual Black Lightning costume design and uh, how they compare uh, in your guys' opinions. It's also been confirmed that Black Lightning will not appear on an existing Earth that we have traveled to or communicated with. It's gonna be in its own separate world, so no direct ties to the Arrowverse or Supergirl, which is the only bit of news that really bothers me in regards to the show. Now, I wanna make myself very clear here when I say that it bothers me. It's not that having Black Lightning existing on their own Earth you know, is being a problem. It's that the CW itself seems to be very lukewarm to having the shows ever connect, like having Black Lightning connecting with any of the other shows. Um, and this puts Black Lightning in a very strange position because it airs on the CW network with other DC TV shows and it exists within the lineup for the current shows, but it's not connected. So I think that could be problematic. Now, one of the major reasons for this and one of the hurdles that I've read is that Black Lightning films in Atlanta, so it's not easy for these shows to cross over, not like they are now. Um, you know, the actors may never even meet each other while filming because the distance is so big between the two filming locations. However, you know, for crossover events, it seems that they could maybe make an exception. I mean, I hope. But the thing is, with the shuffle with the CW shows this past season, we know that they were just like filming the crossover in between filming other episodes. So uh, that could be a problem for Black Lightning. I also wanna talk a bit about the scheduling of Black Lightning. At this rate, if Black Lightning gets picked up for a full season next year, we will have five shows on the CW that are DC TV related with superheroes, okay? I know there are other DC properties, but the superhero genre will have five shows with that as the core of the episodes. Um, so if Black Lightning isn't connected, why not turn it into a summer series? I don't think anything would have a problem with that. And I, for one, think it would make more sense to move them into that summer schedule if they don't want to ever cross over. Because having all five shows on at the same time, but one of them mixed into the bunch that isn't actually connected, I don't know, it seems kind of confusing. Do they not think that the demographics for the shows are going to be close enough that they cannot air them? Uh, together as a crossover event? Do they think that it's going to be that spread out? Because I think fans of the other shows are going to tune in to Black Lightning, just as I think people that would watch Black Lightning would also watch the majority of the other shows. I don't know. It's an executive thing, I'm sure. So that's all the major stuff we know so far about the series, all the things that I think you guys would be interested in. Don't forget it's going to debut with the other shows when they come back without Legends coming back until after Supergirl does its thing, which we'll talk about that in a moment. But it's very exciting to me. It's like a street-level show with metahumans and powered people. Very like Arrow meets the Flash. I'm all for that. Uh, let me know if you guys are excited for this Black Lightning series in the comments below. Now let's talk about Supergirl and some recent drama and PR statements made by the CW because this is very interesting stuff. So as you guys probably know by now, Supergirl is coming back for four weeks, then it's going on break until April to make room for Legends of Tomorrow. Well, the drama behind this change has pushed the CW boss Mark Pedowitz 
to make some official statements. Now, keep in mind, this is the head honcho at the CW. This isn't like a director, a writer, a cast member, or even the showrunner. This is the guy in charge of everything. So it's a very significant thing for him to make any sort of statements. So the good news is, speaking with TV line, Mark seemed very confident in the lineup of DC shows. Optimistic about all of them being renewed. Nothing is confirmed. There's been videos where people are saying it's confirmed they're coming back. Although I am very confident as well, all the shows are coming back. I would not say confirmed. Confirmed is the wrong thing to say. He said specifically optimistic. Optimistic means that there are no decisions made at the moment. So number one, I just want to clear the air with that. Um, and he expressed his total faith in Supergirl as a brand for the network. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to you guys, as you're well aware, Supergirl is one of the top viewed shows on the CW, whether you like it or not, it pulls in numbers for the network. Uh, he then spoke about the time shift for Supergirl and gave a statement in regards to why they made this decision to move the show. So in regards to Supergirl, Mark said that the show itself was having some production issues and that they were happening well before the issues with Andrew Kreisberg. Just to catch you guys up to speed, Andrew Kreisberg was the showrunner, the head showrunner for Supergirl. He was accused of inappropriate conduct at work, a lot of stuff. We don't know all the specifics. And he, he was eventually let go. However, okay, <laughs> I'm very skeptical of Mark's statement here because when a network head makes a statement like this about production issues in regards to a show, it typically means he's trying to get ahead of the rumors. Now, he also stated that they didn't want all five DC TV shows airing at the same time. <sighs> so let me give you guys my thoughts on this. So I wanna start off by saying, I do not think Mark is lying completely, okay? I don't think he's being maliciously dishonest here, uh, but I seriously doubt he's being 100% honest with his statements. Let me explain why. First of all, they knew Black Lightning was coming. So they had to be aware that they would be stacking a ton of DC content on the CW at the same time. This wasn't like, the show just popped up out of nowhere, right? Uh, so for him to act as if they didn't want this many DC TV shows on at one time, that seems odd to me. They could have easily pushed Black Lightning back into a summer premiere, considering the small amount of episodes. I don't think it would have been a problem at all. Um, so in that regard, I don't think that's an excuse in my mind. It's more of a convenient scapegoat for larger problems. So I, I, in regards to all five shows airing at the same time, yes, I think it's a lot, but at the same time, I don't think that's why they decided to move Supergirl. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, the next red flag for me is the fact that Mark did mention that this move for Supergirl did not have anything to do with the Andrew Kreisberg situation, which means that they saw this as a problem on their radar for a while, the whole Andrew Kreisberg and moving Supergirl. When they made that decision, they knew this was gonna be a problem. They had outlets leaking rumors about it being a major part of the production issue, which means at some point, this did interfere with the show. It had to at some point. So even if all the production problems weren't stemming from Andrew 100%, it's a pretty sure bet that some of the problems came from him. And you can't unexpectedly like fire a major showrunner and a source of creative elements to a show like Supergirl and pretend that it did not affect production. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. There's no way that Andrew Kreisberg was let go unexpectedly in a month's time and it did not affect the production of a major TV show with uh, executives being behind it and and all these other connective tissues with all these other shows, Andrew was a was one of the masterminds behind all these crossover events and everything going on with the shows. I'm I'm sorry, guys. I do not believe that that Andrew being fired had nothing to do with this. Lastly, and probably the most important thing to note here, everybody, is that Mark Mark Pedowitz most likely cannot tie Andrew to any problems that are going on right now legally. With how Andrew was let go and lots of legal problems most likely still happening behind the scenes that we don't know about, chances are there's paperwork in play that prevent Andrew or anyone at the CW from commenting on anything happening on the business side. It's very commonplace for these kinds of things to be done in writing. So yes, that means even if Andrew did cause this problem, Mark isn't going to come out and blame him. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine the head of CW coming out and making a statement 
blaming uh, Andrew for what happened with Supergirl, it, it just would not happen. It would not happen. <laughs> that would leave the network open for a lot of problems, slander or even libel. Um, you know, and I'm pretty sure they signed some sort of clause. There's some sort of NDA type thing going on with the two of them because there's just no way that he, if, if Andrew was a problem, he wouldn't, have, he would not say it anyway. <laughs> I believe that. I don't think he would ever come out and just say that. But I also know, uh, I'm pretty certain, and I say I know this with certainty because I, I honestly, you see this all the time in these big companies. When someone is let go, there's usually paperwork signed so they cannot go after each other. Uh, in public, especially making statements like this. I don't expect Mark to make those statements. That's just how I feel. Bottom line, guys, I believe there's a mixed bag of stuff going on here. I think for sure Mark is trying to get ahead of the story and calm the masses to direct attention away from this delay in production, which is a huge delay. He's never going to blame Andrew Kreisberg. It'll most likely just continue to cover this up until the season is done and they think no one cares anymore. You know, either way, I don't mind. I don't have a problem with it. Supergirl is moving, and even with that petition going around, it seems that the problems are big enough there's no way to change it. It's very admirable. I signed the petition too, <laughs> so, I mean, it's just very admirable here. Um, but again, it's very suspect to me, but I'm accepting that we're going to have Supergirl until the end, until the summer at least, uh, so I'm okay for that for now. So, anyway, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Mark is just covering up for the stuff that happened with Andrew like I do? Don't blame him. I think that it's a PR thing, and I'm absolutely okay with that. I just do not, it's like there's no way you can let go of the showrunner and that not have any effect on this major production delay. Um, I'm just not buying it. I'm sorry. But I still love Supergirl, and I have faith that they're going to keep chugging right along, so we're going to see. Okay, so let's move away from that story and all that drama and talk a little bit about The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. So, as you guys know, uh, Legends is trying to fill the void left behind for two characters, Martin and Jax. However, it looks as if they're only going to need one character to fill that spot, and we've been trying to figure that out. As we go closer and closer to the seasons returning, it seems that the rumor mill is constantly churning out information, and we are waiting to find out who's going to jump on the Wave Rider with our team of Legends. And the word on the street is from many different sources that it's going to be Wally West Kid Flash, which isn't really a big surprise. And to be honest, if you look at the characters available to use, because they did say it's going to be somebody that we've already met in the existing Arrowverse, Wally is the most suited for the needs of the ship. By losing Martin and Jax, they lost a scientist slash engineer and their ship's mechanic, which is a huge chunk of the team's support system. Now, Wally isn't some great scientist, but he is a known mechanic, and from what we know, he was going to school to utilize those skills, so this is part of his existing skill set. And from being a speedster, he could easily learn in a record time how to repair things on the ship, not to mention he would be very useful to the team in both regards. The only real drawback is that they already have budget issues with special effects, but by losing two actors and filling the void with one, that could leave room in the budget for more stuff. Not to mention, Wally West comes with a Kid Flash suit already and all of his CGI models are done. So this means they wouldn't have to spend money on practical effects or mapping a person for visual effects. So this could help them cut corners in that regard. Like literally, it's just moving him from one show to another and you're done. This would also be great for his character as he has a huge comic book legacy and I personally don't think that the Arrowverse wants to let that go. I mean, what other options do we have? We have Ragman who, as far as we know, still doesn't have his powers back. We have like James Olsen, the Guardian, which I don't think he's going to be moving over. They're working him as a love interest with Lena. And then Constantine, who's coming back as a guest spot. I don't think if he was coming back full time, they would just bring him back for like two episodes and then send him away and then bring him back again. Um, and none of those guys really fill the necessary void left behind by the two characters involved with Firestorm. Also, anytime we have a person from the future travel back in time to face off against Barry Allen the Flash, it's almost as if Kid Flash doesn't have any impact on the future. You know, they never mention him. He's never mentioned as being a factor to anything that happens in the future. Uh, so this also tells me that the showrunners really have no long-term plans for his character on the Flash series, so seeing him on Legends would give him that growth that everyone wants to see. At least I think everybody wants to see. I like Wally. I just feel like he's being underused. So, you know, let's see. Having a speedster on Legends could be problematic, but it could also be the best thing ever. 
And I think that's where I'm going to wrap this video up. We had no major news from Teen Titans or Arrow this week, at least, you know, not at the time of making this video. So if we do see anything, I'm going to save those updates for next week's video. I also want to remind you guys that this upcoming Saturday, um, I don't have the exact date right off the top of my head, but it's this upcoming Saturday of this week. It's 7 p.m. GMT, which is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're going to be having our four channel crossover uh, episode live stream that we always do. Um, and this time it's going to be, of course, me, Paigey, Boba Talks, and Ben from the DC TV show getting together to interact with you guys live. If you've ever been to one of these, there's so much fun. We have such a blast talking about everything together in one place for all you guys to ask us questions. And I believe Paigey has some special stuff planned uh, because it's going to be on his channel. So if you guys want to know more about that, uh, head over to Paigey's channel. I'm going to put the link down in the info box in case you don't know where it is. I'm sure most of you guys do. Um, but yeah, it's going to be this Saturday and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, 7 p.m. GMT, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I uh, want to shout out to all my peeps on Patreon. You guys are great. Thank you so much for helping support the channel. I know that I don't have a lot of stuff to offer over there, but you guys keep me help keep me motivated to continue to make content while YouTube keeps continuously screwing me over. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button and leave a comment down below on any of the topics I talked about in this video. I love to hear from you guys and read your responses. All right, take care. Have a great day. Have a great week, and I will catch you guys later.